Hey guys and welcome to Decode NCRT and today we are going to be talking about bicyclic and spiro compounds. So let's know what are bicyclic compounds. So bicyclic, so bicyclic compounds are basically compounds that contain two rings which share two common carbon atoms and these two carbon atoms are common for both the rings. So bicyclic compounds are said to be of two kinds. One is fused bicyclic compounds, other one is bridged bicyclic compounds. In fused bicyclic compounds, the shared carbons are directly connected to each other by a single bond. But in a bridged bicyclic compound, the shared carbons are connected to one another by another carbon atoms or atoms as seen in the second example. So you can observe that in the first picture, the two darkened spots are nothing but the common carbon atoms that are shared by both the rings. So this first example represents a fused bicyclic compound. The second one, the two common highlighted carbon atoms are connected by two sets of uh, bridges. So in the first bridge, there are two carbon atoms that connect these common carbon atoms. And in the second one also, there are two carbon atoms that connect these common carbon atoms. So this is our, uh, so these are our bicyclic compounds. So these common carbon atoms are also known as bridge head carbon atoms. And the bond that is formed by them is known as a bridge. So now, so now coming to how do we name these compounds? So the serial numbers are nothing but the locons are allotted to these carbon atoms by starting from one bridgehead carbon and going to the other bridgehead via the larger bridge. So you start by naming that ring which has more number of carbon atoms present in it. For example, if both the rings have same number of carbon atoms present in it, then you go according to the priority of any particular function group or any particular substituent attached to it so that the substituent gets the you know least locant number but we always start allotting the locants in such a way that the ring with which we are starting gets uh, has the larger number of carbon atoms and the name bicyclic compound starts with a prefix bicyclo and the next rule is that by the side of the prefix we have to attach a bracket in which we have to write the number of carbon atoms present in these three bridges when they are uh, inserted in descending order. So whenever we are writing down these uh, names, we have to write down the number of carbon atoms present in each ring or present in each bridge between these two common carbon atoms. And we have to write down that in descending order, that is from highest to lowest. And these numbers are separated by commas. The name of the compound is written by the side of this bracket following the IUPAC name. So this name is given according to calculating the number of carbon atoms present in the main parent chain so that we can realize what is the, you know, uh, uh, we can realize the total number of carbon atoms present in the parent chain and give its root word like hept, oct, non, hex, anything. So the names of the substituents are prefixed to bicyclo with their positions in the ring. That means that if there's any substituents, substituents attached to this bicyclic compounds, it's, uh, it is written before the prefix bicyclo. Now coming to our first example. Here you can see that the first and fourth carbon here are the common bridged carbon heads. And there are two rings attached here. And hence we can know that this is a bicyclo bicyclic compound. So first we have to count the total number of carbon atoms present here. So starting with a bridged carbon, we have to always start naming a compound from one of the bridges, from one of the bridge carbon heads. So I'm taking from the top one. So I go like one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can know that there are six carbon atoms present in our bicyclic compound. So let's calculate the number of carbon atoms present in each bridge or each ring. So taking at the right side ring here, I realize that there are two carbon atoms present and coming in the left side ring also there are two carbon atoms present. That's nothing but carbon five and carbon six. But in our, uh, bit, but between the bonded carbons, uh, nothing but the common carbons, we do not have any particular carbon attached in between them. Hence, there is no carbon present here. And so we name it as, so we tell it there are zero bridges or zero, um, you know, carbon atoms present in a bridge. And this is an example of a fused bicyclic compound. So the name goes as bicyclo as it is a prefix, then bracket, two, 
comma 2 comma 0 which is also goes in descending order 2 for the number of carbon atoms present in one ring 2 for the number of carbon atoms present in the other side of ring 0 for the number of uh, for the zero number of carbon atoms present in the bonded uh, in the bonded carbon uh, compounds nothing but the common carbon compounds and hexane for the parent chain containing six carbon atoms and it is a saturated one so we don't have any enes and ions attached to it for so next example here we notice that the first and fifth carbon are the main common carbons so there are two rings here and those are the rings starting from one two three four and the other one is from five six one and the seventh carbon on the top is nothing but a bridge carbon that uh, which makes this compound to be a bridge fused uh, bicyclo com compound. So let's by starting the numbering, we all are aware that numbering is done in such a way that the one with more number of carbon atoms, that is nothing but the ring with more number of carbon atoms, uh, is given first preference when compared to the ring with lesser number of carbon atoms. So in this way, if I start from one to two in from the left side, so there are you know. Uh, seven carbons in total, including the uh, top carbon that is but a bridge carbon. So now in total there are one, two, three, three carbon atoms in our first ring, one carbon atom in our second ring, and there is one um, carbon atom that acts as our bridge carbon. So when we all are doing the numbering, we know that we always start numbering. Uh, we always start uh, naming a compound by first writing the prefix bicyclo. And then the number of carbon atoms present in the two rings, and then the number of carbon atoms present in the bridge chain. And uh, this is written, and this numbers are written in a descending order that is highest to lowest. So the name of this compound will be bicyclo 3, 1, 1 heptane. Heptane because there are seven carbons in the uh, total compound. Now coming to our next example, here you can see that there, that there is one substituent group present on our uh, seventh and first carbon. And also there is a ketone group also present in our um, bicyclo compound. So we all know that when we are you know, following, whenever, whenever we are naming a bicyclo compound, we even we name it using the IUPAC rule. So according to IUPAC, when compared to any other, um, you know, constituent in this compound compared to you know an alkane ketone is given more uh, preference so we do the numbering such a way so that the ketone carbon gets the least local number so while doing this we realize that the total number of carbon atoms in this compound are seven and the number of carbon atoms present in each chain are two and the number of bridged carbon atoms is one so the name of this compound will be 1,7 dimethyl bicyclo 2,2,1 heptane 2 ohm. 1,7 dimethyl for the two methyl groups attached on the first and seventh carbon and bicyclo 2,2,1 2 for the left ring, 2 for the right ring and 1 for the uh, fused, uh, 1 for the bridged carbon present at the seventh position and heptane 2 ohm because the ketone group is present on the second uh, carbon. Now coming to our next example, here you can see that the fifth and tenth carbon are nothing but our common carbon atoms and they don't have a bridge carbon in between them so it's a fused bicyclo compound. And we have an alkene group and a chlorine group. So now when we are giving the locant numbering, it's done in such a way that the first, that the alkene group is even more preference than the chlorine group according to IUPAC naming. So when we start naming the compound, so as I go from the alkene to coming back till the you know, last carbon, here I realize that there are 10 carbon atoms present in our compound. So let's count the number of carbon atoms present in each ring. So in the right ring, there are one, two, three, four, four carbons. And even in the left ring, there are four carbons. And there is no common carbon or no bridge carbon in between our um, common atoms. So name of this compound will be three, will be three chloro bicyclo 4, 4, 0 deck 1 in. 3 chloro because there is a chlorine group attached on the third carbon. Bicyclo 4, 4, 0. 4 for each um, ring. And uh, deck 1 in. And 1 in because there is a double bond that is present on the first carbon. Now coming to spiro compounds. 
Now the only difference between a spiro and a bicyclo compound is that a bicyclo compound is a compound that has two rings that are attached by two common carbons. But in a spiro compound, two carbon rings are attached um, are attached with each other with only one single common uh, with only one single carbon atom. That means here we only have one common carbon atom. Introduction. So if two rings share a single carbon that uh, in that compound, it is called as a spiro compound. Now this nomenclature is also the same way that it follows the IUPAC naming, just there are some slight changes. Rather than starting with the name bicyclo here, it starts with the prefix uh, spiro. And uh, by the side of this uh, prefix spiro, the number of atoms present, present in the two bridges are indicated in the ascending order. That means from lowest to highest. In bicyclo compounds, we go from highest to least. The, I'm sorry, the serial numbers are allotted to these carbon atoms to the two rings by starting from the adjacent carbon bridge in uh, that has smaller um, carbon atoms present in the ring. So in bicyclo compounds, we start naming the ring. Uh, we start naming from the ring that has more number of carbon atoms. But in spiro, we start naming the we start allotting the serial numbers from the carbon bridge or from the carbon uh, ring that has lesser number of carbon atoms. And the names of the substituents are indicated before the prefix spiro, just like bicyclo compounds. Then if the name ends with the secondary uh, suffix, uh, if the name ends, uh, the name will end with, with a secondary suffix if there's a functional group present. The name of the compound is written by the side of the bracket following the IUPAC rules. So coming to our first example, here you see that there is one, um, you know, five carbon there's one six carbon ring and a four carbon ring present and both are attached at a common point and we start uh, naming these compounds in such a way that um, the smaller ring we start with the smaller ring uh, so that um, according so that um, we start with the smaller ring so that when we start doing the numbering the smaller ring gets the least local number and the bigger ring gets the higher local number now if you count, count the fourth carbon has uh, the common point is that you want the common share and there are uh, five carbon atoms in one ring and three carbon atoms in the other one and there are totally nine carbon atoms in the total compound. So the name of this compound will be spiro, three comma five, three comma five, no name. And we start writing it in ascending order that is, uh, you know, smaller to bigger. Just like how we do the locant allotment number, we start from the smaller carbon ring to going to the bigger carbon ring. Same way when we write the name. So the name will be spiro 3 comma 5 no name. Now coming to our next example, we uh, start by we start giving the locant position from the smaller ring, even though the other ring has an alkane group because here the priority is more given to the number of carbon chain, uh, number of carbon atoms present in the chain. So when we start doing this, we realize that there are seven carbon atoms in the total uh, compound and the common carbon is the third carbon and there are two carbon atoms in the first ring and four carbon atoms in the second ring. So the name of this compound will be spiro 2,4 hept 6 in uh, 2,4 uh, because for the number of carbon atoms present in each ring, hept for the number of carbon atoms 6 in because the double bond is present at the sixth position. Now coming to our next compound here, there are two substituents attached, chlorin and alcohol. We all know that alcohol has given more preference when compared to chlorin. So when we are even naming this compound, so we all know that we will always first start with the small ring. Now after we have named one, two, three, now the dilemma is that should we go top or should we go bottom? But we all know that alcohol is more is given more priority when compared to an alkane group. So that's why we start from the down. So it is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is the alcohol uh, one gets the least local number in the bigger chain. So the name of this compound will be 1 chloro spiro 2,5 octane 4 ol. And here alcohol is a functional group and chlorine is a substituent. And there are two uh, rings and there are two carbon atoms present in a small ring and five carbon atoms present in a bigger ring and there are eight carbon atoms in total and the alcohol group is present on the fourth carbon and the chlorine group is present on the first carbon because here uh, we start from the chlorine group because the substituent carbon atom gets the le uh, least number of locant. Now these are some previous years questions that I'm discussing. So the first question here is about camphor. They are given us a structure and they are asking us its IUPAC name. So here we have to first find out which are the 
common carbon atoms. Now, if you realize that there is an, um, we have an uh, ketone group and there are two um, methyl groups attached in the common point. And hence, I, we can say that um, the one carbon here, the pointer here and here are nothing but, I'll just mark them. The carbons here and here are our main uh, common carbon atoms. So when we start naming a bicyclo compound, if you realize this is a bicyclo compound, and whenever we are naming a bicyclo compound, we always name um, we always start with the ring that has more number of carbon atoms. So here, if you see that. Um, both the rings have here we see both the rings have two carbon atoms present in them and there is one carbon atom present at the top so when we start naming this we start with the ketone one so one two three four five six so we start one two three four five six seven so the top one gets the number seven this is one this is two this is three four five six and seven so we have to first write the number of substituents here so it will be uh, we have like three methyl groups here one at the first carbon position and two at the seventh carbon position so one comma seven comma seven trimethyl bicyclo 2 comma 2 comma 1 because there are two carbon rings in uh, because there are two carbon atoms in both the rings and one carbon atom present in the bridge hept hept 2 on so the answer will be the first option because it all satisfies our calculation and you could you guys can take down the example and also the correct name now coming to the next example here they are asking is the IUPAC name of this structure that was proposed by uh, Divar for the comp uh, for the compound benzene. Here, if you see that this is also a bicyclo compound, and it has a common the common atoms are here, and the two double bonds also present here. And if let's count down the number of carbon atoms present in this, so one, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 carbon atoms present in this compound. There are 2 carbon atoms in each ring and there is no bridge carbon here. And there are uh, double bonds present on the 2nd and 5th position. So the name of this compound will be bicyclo 2,2,0 hexa 2,5 diene. This is going to be the name of our structure. This was one of the structures, early structures that were proposed by many scientists uh, for the structure of benzene. Finally, it was KQ who gave the structure of benzene and the well-known structure that we all know now. Now we have here one more example where they have given us a bicyclo compound and they have an alcohol group attached here. So we have to do the numbering in such a way that the carbon ring with more carbon atoms is given more preference. So if I start numbering from here, one, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine carbon atoms in a total chain and there are one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And there are uh, three, so there are four and three carbon atoms present in our main chain. We all know that we write this in a descending order. So the name of the compound will be bicyclo 4, 3, 0, no name, 2, old. Bicyclo 4, 3, 0 because 4 here is for the number of carbon atoms present in the larger chain, that is 4, and 3 for the number of carbon atoms present in the smaller chain, and 0 for no carbon atoms present in the bridge carbon, no name, 2, old, because there is an alcohol group attached on the second carbon. And no name because there are nine carbon atoms in total. So now here they are asking the structure or formula of bicyclo 2, 2, 2 
oct phi in 2 ohm so now here if you realize we need to find a compound that has um, you know two bridges it has two, uh, you know, um, carbon atoms present in its bridge and each of its ring has two carbons and there is an um, double bond present here, only one double bond present and one ketone group present. So if I look at all of the examples and I take the um, third example, that is the third option and let's, you know, try for this one. So I start numbering, if I consider this one and this carbon to be a common bridge at carbons. You can see that the number of carbon atoms present in the bridge are two, number of carbon atoms present in each ring are two. And if I start numbering from this first carbon here, the ketone group gets the number two, three, four, five. The double bond gets the number five, six, seven, seven, eight. And the number of carbon atoms in this eight. So if I read out the name for this compound, it will be bicyclo 2, 2, 2, oct 5 in 2 ohm. So this is the correct example. So this is all for today's video. I hope you all have understood what are bicyclo and spiro compounds and how to name them. If you guys like this video, please do like, share and comment on the video and also do share it with your friends and colleagues and teachers. If you guys want me to explain any more topic further, please put it down in the comment box or you can ping me on my Instagram page. So that's all for today. I hope you all have learned and enjoyed this video. So take care. Stay safe. Bye.